welcome to the ultimate guide to Shopify dropshipping. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? This video is gonna show you everything you need to know to build your own dropshipping business in the shortest time possible. There's gonna be absolutely no fluff in this video. There's gonna be no sales pitches to buy a course or join a mentorship program. This one video is gonna teach you everything you need to know, give you all the tools and all the knowledge. Knowledge to make your first $1,000 with Shopify dropshipping. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step on how to find the best products to sell, how to create a professional and branded Shopify store, and then the most important part, how to drive traffic to your store so you can start making sales as fast as possible. So make sure you're focused, turn your phone to airplane mode, grab a cup of coffee, and then let's get started building your dropshipping business. Let's start with the first step of building a successful Shopify dropshipping store, which is doing product research and finding a great product to sell. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the seven best methods to find potentially winning products. We'll begin with my currently favorite product research method, the TikTok ads buy method. Go to Google and type in top ads on TikTok and you should be able to find this website here that gives you access to all the ads on TikTok. So for example, we could look for ads running in the United States, then select a niche like beauty and personal care, set the objective to conversions and product sales, and then look for ads that have been running in the last 30 days. Then we can even sort the ads by the ones that are performing the best in terms of reach, click through rate and retention rate. This allows us to see the ads that make people actually click and visit the store after seeing the ad. The reason this is currently my favorite product research method is because we can not only find tons of product ideas in minutes, but we can also see what ads are performing the best for these products. Let's move on to method number two, the Facebook ads buy method. This is where we look at what products are currently being sold on Facebook and Instagram by looking at ads on these platforms. For Facebook, I like to use a free Chrome extension called My Ad Finder, which filters out all the regular Facebook content and just shows us the ads. To make sure we only see e-commerce ads, we wanna make sure to click on an e-commerce ad that we can find and then on the store, go all the way to the checkout page and do that for a couple of more e-com ads as well. This will tell Facebook that we are interested in e-commerce products, so we'll pretty much only see e-com ads from that point on forward. And we're able to find hundreds of potential product ideas within just a few minutes. If you wanna see more ads that a particular brand is currently running, what you wanna do is go to the Facebook ads library, enter a target country, choose all ads, and then type in their brand name. That'll show you all the ads that this brand is currently running. This is a great way to see what marketing angles are currently working for other stores, so you can basically use the same or similar angles for your own ads. Sometimes you can also simply type in a product name and you'll be able to find stores selling that particular product on Facebook. What I like to do is check different countries to see if there is a market where nobody is selling that particular product yet. This might be a great opportunity to find a winning product that is already selling well and be the first one to sell it in a new market. Now onto method number three, the paid ads by method. This is basically the same method as the first two, but now we use services like adspy.com, Minia, PP ads, or other tools that automatically show us new winning products every single day. So these tools basically look at all the active ads on Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, or Pinterest, and then look at the ones that are performing the best in terms of views, shares, likes, and comments. This allows us to save tons of time finding all the ads ourselves and analyzing their performance. So for example, here on Minia, we can simply go to Facebook ads. For the filter, I like to go to advanced and then set the creation date to the last 30 days, the language to English, the e-com platform to Shopify, and the likes to a minimum of 500 likes. This will show us all the ads that have been created in the last 30 days and have been proven to be successful because they already have a decent amount of likes. We can click on the ad to see more information about that particular store running this ad. The engagement over time tells us if people are still interested in this product, which is a good sign. 
When we click on shop analysis, we can see if the store traffic is increasing or decreasing, and we can even see the Shopify theme and the Shopify apps that this store is using. I'll leave a list of the best ad spy tools that I recommend down below in the video description. Let's move on to method number four, the viral TikTok method, where we look at TikTok product videos that have recently gone viral. So simply open up TikTok, go to the search feature on the top right and type in popular hashtags, like for example, TikTok made me buy it. To make sure we can get on trends early, we wanna go to the filters on the top right and then under date posted, we're gonna change it from all time to this month. Then hit apply and TikTok will show us the most popular videos with that hashtag. And here are some more hashtags you can check to find trending products on TikTok. When you find a product that looks interesting to you, you can also click on their TikTok profile and usually you'll find a link to the store selling that specific product. These people are basically using organic TikTok content to get visitors to their store. This is a great strategy, especially if you are on a low budget. The fifth product research method I wanna show you is the supplier reach out method. This is where we directly contact suppliers on AliExpress, Alibaba, or also other sites and ask them what products have recently started to sell for them. Because they are the ones delivering the product, so they have all the information what products are working well right now. Obviously, they benefit too from more people selling their products, so they will tell us exactly what products have recently started to sell for them. By using this method, we're able to find products that aren't too saturated yet and get on trends early. The next method I wanna show you is the Amazon movers and shakers method. This is where we spend time on amazon.com and look at products that have recently been gaining in popularity. On Amazon, we can click on all and then go to movers and shakers. That shows us the biggest gainers in terms of sales rank over the past 24 hours. So these are the products that have recently become very popular on Amazon. I recommend to go through some interesting categories on the left side and just spend some time looking at these trending products. And Amazon actually updates these products every single hour. Method number seven is the AliExpress rabbit hole method. This is where we simply go to aliexpress.com and go through their product recommendation system. So on the AliExpress homepage, we just click on products that look interesting and then ask ourselves if we could market that product creatively on social media. And for each product that we click on, we can also scroll all the way down and look at the recommended products. If we keep doing this for like 20 minutes, we can find tons of product ideas that we wouldn't have found anywhere else. So now you know exactly how to find potentially winning products. But what are we looking for exactly in a product so that we can maximize our chances of starting a successful and profitable store? So here are some things to look for when choosing your first product. First of all, the product needs to be something that actually adds a value to somebody's life and actually solves a real world problem. We don't wanna sell something that is of low quality or doesn't do what it promises that would just lead to tons of refunds and a horrible experience for you and your customers. Then we wanna think about the platform we will be selling that product on, which is mainly Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. People go to these platforms to be entertained and not to buy products. This is why products with a so-called wow factor work the best on these platforms. So try and find products that look interesting and maybe even something that many people haven't seen before. Optimally, it should be relatively easy for people to understand the benefit of your product within just a few seconds. The best products are the ones that give you tons of creative ways on how you can advertise it on social media. Another factor you wanna consider is the selling price. Many people on social media generally don't buy very expensive products from brands that they haven't seen before. So we wanna make sure that we can sell our product at a price that is low enough so that people are willing to take out their credit card right then and there and purchase without overthinking too much because of a high price. At the same time, we don't wanna sell something that is too cheap because then it'll be hard to make a profit after all the expensive. A good selling price to shoot for is $20 to $100. For anything above $100, it's gonna be less likely for people to do an impulse purchase. In order to be profitable, we wanna make sure we can get the product from our supplier for a third or better yet, a quarter of the price that we are selling the product for. Meaning we'll be shooting for a 3X or even a 4X markup. 
So if we're able to get the product for $10 from our supplier, we want to sell it on our store for $30 to $40. Anything below $30, which would mean below a 3x markup, it would be very difficult to be profitable. We also want to look at the current market situation for a potential product. You're most likely not going to find a product where you don't have any competition. So don't worry if there's already other people selling the same product. Usually that just means that there is a demand. If you are trying to find stores that are currently selling the product that you're looking at, I have a quick tip on how to easily find those stores. What you can do is simply take a screenshot of the product, then go to Google Images, click on this icon here, which is the search image feature, then upload your screenshot and then click on find image source. This will usually show you all the stores that are currently selling this product. We also want to check the long-term trend of a product or niche. For every product that you consider, check on Google Trends if your product or the niche your product is in is in an upward trend or a downward trend. Generally, you want to go for products where the demand is increasing and not decreasing. If you go for a product that is seasonal, make sure to launch your store at the start of the season and not at the end. Once we find a good product that we think has potential, the next step is to find a good supplier for that product. There's three factors that you want to consider when choosing your supplier. The sourcing price, the shipping time, and the product quality. Sourcing price means how much you will have to pay to the supplier to get the product shipped to the customer. Like I've already mentioned, we want to sell the product for at least three times the price that we paid to the supplier. That gives us enough of a margin so that we can be profitable after our advertising cost. If you're going to go with free traffic methods like TikTok Organic, then you can obviously get away with a lower margin as you don't have to pay for advertising. When it comes to the shipping time, obviously the faster the better. Now it can be quite a challenge to find a supplier selling your product for a good price that also offers fast shipping times. The place where you find the most products and suppliers for dropshipping is still AliExpress.com, a site that you're probably already familiar with. The big downside of using AliExpress are the very long shipping times. With AliExpress standard shipping, you're looking at anywhere from 15 to 45 working days. And with AliExpress express shipping, it's going to be 7 to 15 working days. However, in some extreme cases, it can take over two months for your customers to receive the product, which obviously leads to a lot of angry customers and potentially many refunds. Personally, I try to avoid working with AliExpress suppliers, but sometimes it's just the only place where you can find your product. I recommend to look for suppliers that actually have warehouses in the country you're selling in, which is most likely the US or Europe. CJ Dropshipping, for example, is a good option. They have warehouses in the US, Canada, Australia, the UK, and many European countries as well. That's how we're able to get shipping times of two to seven working days, which is definitely a lot better than on AliExpress. Another great place to check for suppliers if you're selling in the US is Zendrop. With Zendrop, you also get some custom branding options where you can add a product insert with your logo and a thank you note. Another good option is Spocket.co. They also have fast shipping times to the US and Europe. And the last option I want to give you for local warehouses is BigBuy.eu. This is one of the go-to dropshipping platforms if you want to sell in Europe. Now, when talking to your suppliers about shipping times, make sure you ask them to send you the last five tracking numbers of products they have shipped to your target market. That way you'll be able to exactly see how long it took for the products to get to the customer. And now, like I've already mentioned, the third factor you wanna consider when choosing your supplier is the product quality. If you're looking for suppliers on AliExpress, type in the name of your product you're looking for and then sort the results by the number of orders. That'll usually show you the most popular suppliers on the top. Then you want to make sure that the positive feedback rate of the supplier is at least 90%. Optimally, it should be over 95%. Also, make sure that the product itself has a rating of 4.5 stars or more and read the reviews of the customers who have already purchased the product. Usually, you'll also find pictures of the actual product and the packaging that the customer received. Now you have all the information you need to find a potential winning product and you know exactly where to source that product from. Make sure you don't get stuck in analysis paralysis where you keep looking for the perfect product but you never actually launch your store. It's never going to be perfect so the only way to find your first winning product is to actually launch your store and test the product.
So once you find the product that you want to sell, it's time to create your dropshipping store. We're going to be using Shopify as the platform to build our store on. I've been also using other e-commerce platforms, but Shopify is definitely the best choice. I'm also an official Shopify partner, so I have my own landing page where you can always find the best sign-up offers. Like right now, you can get a three-day free trial plus three months of using Shopify for just $1 per month. So you want to make sure to click on the first link down below in the video description, which will take you to this page. And then to sign up, simply type in your email address and then click on start free trial. Then we're going to choose a password and a store name. We're going to skip all the survey questions to save some time. That will take us into the Shopify dashboard. The first thing I like to do is select a Shopify plan. So let's click on select a plan. Here I'm going to select the monthly payment option and I'm going to go for the basic plan, which has everything we need for this store. Then we need to add a payment method right here. And once that's done, we can click on start plan. Now we are still in the free trial, so we will only get charged if we don't cancel our plan within the 14 day free trial period. The next step we're going to do is choose a theme for our store. So let's click on online store and go to themes. Here we can see that the current theme of our store is the dawn theme, which is the default one. When we scroll down, we can also find different free themes that we can use. Personally, I like to use the Sense theme. It looks very modern and clean, which is perfect for our branded dropshipping store. So I'm going to add this one to my store. Once the new theme is installed, we're going to click on Publish, which will activate this theme on our store. The next step is to import our product from AliExpress. We're going to use an app called Deezers to make this very quick and easy. In the video description, you'll find a link to Deezers. And when you click on that link, you'll end up on this page right here, where we're going to click on try it free to create our account. Once logged in, we're going to click on Shopify, which will take us to the Shopify app store. Here, we're going to click on add app, then click yes, and then click install app to add Deezers to the Shopify store. Then here, we're going to go with the free plan and click on get started. Then we need to connect Deezers to AliExpress as well. So let's click on AliExpress. And then here we can either log in to our existing AliExpress account or simply create a new account. Once logged in, we're going to click on let's start importing products. We're going to skip this tutorial here. And now there's one more step, which is installing the Deezers Chrome extension. So let's go to home and click on Chrome extension. Add to Chrome. And now we're going to pin this extension to our browser by clicking on the little puzzle icon and making sure the pin is blue. And now we have the Deezers Chrome extension right here. So let's click on it and then click on Deezers. That will take us back to their homepage where we're going to click on login and that will activate the Chrome extension. Now we are ready to import our product. So we can go to AliExpress and find the product that we want to sell on our store. We're going to click on this button that says add to Deezers. Now let's go back to our Deezers dashboard and go to import list, which will show us our product. Before we add this product to our Shopify store, we're going to click on edit product. And then under variants, we're going to make sure to only keep the variants that we actually want to sell on our store. Then we're going to click on save. And now we can click here to push this product to our Shopify store. Make sure this box is ticked and then click push to Shopify. Now, when we go back to our Shopify dashboard and go to products, we should be able to see our imported product. So let's click on it and make some changes. I'm going to first delete the product title and the description that was imported from AliExpress. So now we need to come up with a brand name for this product and store. I like to use a site called namelix.com to get some inspiration for brand names. And I always make sure to check if the .com domain is available for my brand name using the site namechecker.com. For this product, I've decided to go with the name My Easy Breeze. So I'm going to set this name for the product title followed by Mini Cooling Fan. For the product description, we want to spend some time creating a good copy, including the main benefits of using this product and also including images or GIFs showing this product in action. I like to look at competitor stores and also at Amazon listings for this product to find out what the main selling points are. The way I find competitor stores selling the same product is by doing a Google image search. 
So I go to Google Images and click on this icon here. Then I screenshot one of the product images from AliExpress, drag and drop it here, and then click on Find Image Source. That will show me all the online stores that are currently selling this product. And I also make sure to read a lot of reviews on AliExpress and competitor stores to get a good idea of what customers are looking for. If I can find a video of the product, I like to use a site called easygif.com to create GIFs out of the video. I put everything together in the description, highlighting the main selling points and also adding visuals to these selling points. Then I make the headlines a heading 3 and also make sure they are centered. And I'm also going to center the GIFs as well. Then we're going to move on to the images. If the images that were imported from AliExpress are high quality, then we can keep them. Otherwise, we want to search the web for more images of this product. These are the images that I decided to use for the product page. You can simply rearrange them however you like by just dragging them around like this. Then under options, I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to keep the color options. Then we have the variants for this product. To make some adjustments here, let's click on add variant. We want to make sure that each variant is connected to the correct image. So we can click here and select the right image for this variant. Then under pricing, we're going to set the price for this product. To make a good profit, we obviously have to sell at a higher price than what we can get this product for on AliExpress. So I'm setting the price to $29.99 and at a compare price of $59.99 so that on the product page, it will show that this product is 50% off. And I'm going to do that for all the other variants as well. Then we're going to go back and scroll all the way down to the search engine listing. Here I'm going to click on edit and make sure that the URL for our product looks nice and clean. And then we're going to save the changes. Now let's go and see how our product page looks like on our actual store. So we're going to go to online store and then click on customize. This will take us to the Shopify store editor where we can make changes to our store design. Let's switch from the home page to the product page right here. And then let's switch from desktop view to mobile view. Most people will be visiting our store from a mobile phone, which is why I like to edit the store on mobile view as well. So here we can see exactly how our product page currently looks like. The first thing I'm going to do here is delete everything we don't need on this page. Here on the left side, I can simply select the section I want to delete and then click on remove section. The only sections that I want on my product page for now are the announcement bar, header, product information, product recommendations and the footer. So let's start from the top and make some adjustments. We can do that by just clicking on any element and then on the right side we can make changes. For the announcement bar, I'm going to change the text to only today 50% off and free shipping. Then I'm going to scroll down and go to these drop down menu items. I like to use these for FAQs, product information, instructions, return policy and so on. So to edit these, we just click on them and change the heading and also the icon here on the right side. And then in the content field, we just put the relevant information. For this store, I would add FAQs, product information, how to use instructions, shipping information and the return policy. Then let's make sure our changes are saved. And now the next very important thing to add to our product page are the product reviews. What we're going to do is simply import real reviews directly from the AliExpress product page. And we're going to use an app called Luke's to import those reviews to our Shopify store. You'll find a link to this app down below in the video description. So click on that link and that will take you to this page. Here we're going to click on add app and then click on install app. As you can see, Luke's is a paid app for Shopify, but they do have a 14 day free trial, which should be enough time to test this store and get our first sales. I'm going to go with the growth plan because this will allow me to import up to 100 reviews from AliExpress. Then I'm going to click on approve. Let's get started. Then here we can change the language and star color of our reviews. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now and click on continue. Then again, continue and then skip on the top right. And then let's click on import reviews. Here we're going to have to drag this button to the bookmark section of our browser like this. And then we're going to go to the AliExpress product page and click on the import to looks bookmark that we have just added. 
Here we can select the product that we want to import the reviews to. I'm going to scan 100 reviews and then I'm going to click on preview and import. Now I can go through each single review and decide if I want to import it to my product page. If yes, I'm going to click on import. And if I don't want a specific review, I just click on reject. Once finished, we can go back to Shopify. And now the reviews are visible on our product page. Now we also want to customize the theme colors for our store. So we're going to go to theme settings on the bottom left and click on colors. Here I like to match the store colors to the colors of the product to make sure everything looks very branded. I use the Chrome extension Colorzilla to get the color code of any pixel on my screen. Then we can just click on the color we want to change and paste in the color code. Once that's done for all the colors that we want to change, we're also going to go to the checkout page and make sure that this button has the same color as well. So let's go to theme settings, then checkout. And here we're also going to change it to our new color. And now we also want to create a logo for our store. I like to use a site called canva.com to create simple logos very easily and quickly. They already have tons of logo templates that you can start with and then customize using drag and drop. This is the logo I've quickly created for this store. So I'm going to click on share and download it as a PNG. As I only have the free version of Canva, I'm using a site called remove.bg to remove the background of the logo. Then I download the logo with the transparent background. On Shopify, we can simply click on our header and then under logo image, we can upload our logo. Here we can also adjust the size of our logo and then save the changes. Now on the bottom of our store in the footer, we're going to need to add our store policies like the refund policy, terms of service and so on. So to add these policies, we're going to go back to the Shopify dashboard and then click on settings on the bottom left. Here we're going to click on policies. And now we can click on insert from template, which will insert a general policy that would be applicable to most stores. However, we do have to go through the text to make sure we replace all the information in the brackets and also adjust anything that doesn't apply to our store. We're going to do the same thing for the private policy and the terms of service. And then for the shipping policy, we're going to add our shipping terms manually. Then let's save the changes and close the settings. Now under online store, we're going to go to navigation. Here we're going to click on footer menu, click on add menu item. And then under link, we're going to go to policies and add each policy that we have just created before. Once that's done, we're going to click on save menu. And now when we go back to the store editor and scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see that now we have our policy pages in the footer menu. Up until now, we've only been looking at the product page of our store. This is the most important page because our ads on Facebook or TikTok will be sending people directly to the product page. So 99% of people will never even visit our homepage. Nonetheless, we do want to create a very basic homepage for this store. So let's switch to our homepage here. First, I'll delete everything except the image with text section on the top. For this section, I'll just add a simple cover image and then add the product name here. I'm going to change the heading size to small. Then I'm going to change the text here. And I'm also going to change the button text to buy now. Then I also want to add the product to the home page. So I'm going to click on add section and look for the featured product section. Then here I'm going to select my product. And now visitors can also purchase directly from the home page. Then remember to save the changes. Now when we click on these three lines here at the top, we can see the navigation menu. And to make changes to this menu, we're going to go back to the Shopify dashboard. Then under online store, go to navigation. Here we're going to click on main menu. Then I'm going to delete the catalog page. And I'm going to add a new menu item, which is going to be our product page. I'm going to move that right here. Click on save menu. And that's it for our navigation menu. For the contact page, I like to add a short paragraph about what customers can expect. And to do that, we're going to go to the Shopify dashboard and under online store, click on pages, select the contact page, and then we can put our text here. Click on save. And now we have that paragraph on our contact page. Now we're also going to add a favicon to our store. 
A favicon is just this small logo that people will see on their browser. Again, I'm using canva.com and remove.bg to create a simple favicon with a transparent background. Then in the Shopify editor, I'm going to go to theme settings and click on favicon. And here we're going to upload our logo. And now visitors will see our logo in their browser window. This is how the URL of our store currently looks like, which we obviously want to change to our own custom domain so the store looks legit and professional. To add a domain, we're going to go to the settings and then click on domains. If you already have a domain, you can click on connect existing domain and then follow the instructions. But if you don't have a domain yet, you can click on buy new domain. Then here we want to type in our brand name and buy the .com domain. Once we click on buy domain and confirm, our store will be automatically connected to this new domain. And that's it for the front end setup of our store. Now we also need to set up our payment providers and shipping rates. So let's again go to the settings and click on payments. Here we want to make sure to activate Shopify payments so that customers can check out using a credit card or other methods like Apple Pay or Google Pay. PayPal is activated by default on Shopify. If Shopify payments is not available in your country, you can also use third party payment providers like Stripe, for example. Then let's go to shipping and delivery. Here we can set up our shipping rates. So let's click on manage and here delete all of the default shipping rates. Then let's click on create shipping zone, which will define the area where our shipping rate will apply to. Let's create one for the United States. Then we can add a shipping rate for the new shipping zone. I'm going to simply do free shipping for the US. So I'm going to name it free shipping and set the shipping price to zero. Then when we click on done, we've set up free shipping for the US. Now we can also create another shipping zone for international customers by selecting rest of the world. And here I'm going to charge $8 for shipping internationally. So let's click on save and then go to store details. Here we want to make sure to enter our final store name. Also, we want to check our address and contact information and make sure that the store currency is correct. Then we're going to close the settings. Now under online store, go to preferences. Here we're going to type in a homepage title and short description. And then we're going to scroll down to password protection. In order for our customers to visit our new store, we'll need to remove the password. So we're just going to untick this box and then click on save. And now our new online store is live and ready to launch. When we get our first sale, we're going to go to our Deezer's dashboard and click on open orders. Now to fulfill the order, we would just have to click on fulfill order here on this page and make the payment to make sure the product will be sent directly to the customer. So now we're finished setting up our Shopify dropshipping store. The next step is getting people to visit our store and buy our product. The easiest and quickest way to drive traffic to your store and start getting sales is running TikTok ads. TikTok ads are still relatively new, so they are a lot cheaper than Facebook ads, which means that we can reach a lot more people for each dollar that we spend compared to Facebook. That's why for beginners, I definitely recommend to start with TikTok ads. So to set up the TikTok ads for our Shopify store, we first need to add TikTok as a new sales channel on Shopify. So in your Shopify dashboard, go to add apps and then click on Shopify app store, search for TikTok, and then install the TikTok app. Click add app and then click add sales channel. Set up now. And we need to create a new TikTok business account. So let's click on create new and here enter your email and create a password and then send the verification code to your email and paste it in here and click sign up. Now we're going to connect the new TikTok business account to Shopify. So let's click on connect. And then we're going to create our TikTok ads manager. So let's click on create new under country. You want to choose the country you want to advertise in. So if you want to sell to customers in the United States, then choose United States here. Then choose your currency and enter your store name and phone number. 
and then click sign up and connect. Now for data share, we're going to choose maximum. This is going to allow TikTok to get as much data as possible from our Shopify store, which is going to help the TikTok algorithm to find the right customers. Then click confirm. Now we also have to set up our company info. So fill in your information here and then click confirm. Then click finish setup. So now TikTok is connected with Shopify and also the tracking pixel was automatically installed, meaning that whenever we get a sale from TikTok, we'll be able to see exactly where that sale came from and we can optimize based on that data. So to set up our TikTok ads, we're going to go to ads.tiktok.com and then click on create now at the top. This will automatically log you into the TikTok ads manager that we've just created before. So before we start setting up our campaign, I want to quickly show you how a paid ads campaign is structured because that's really important for you to understand. So a campaign has three levels. The first level is the campaign itself. The second level are the ad groups and then the third level are the actual ads. On the campaign level, we basically tell TikTok what the main goal of our campaign is. In our case, this would be sales on our store. On the ad group level, we can define who we want to show our ads to, and we can have multiple ad groups in the same campaign so we can test different types of audiences. And then on the ad level, we create the actual ad, which is what TikTok users will see when our ad pops up in their feed. And also here, we can have multiple ads in one ad group to test which ads result in the most sales. Great, so now that you understand the campaign structure, let's start setting it up. Now we want to make sure to have the full control over our ads. So we're going to click on custom mode here. Then we have to set our advertising objective, which is obviously getting sales on our store. So we're going to choose website conversions here. And then we can name our first campaign. Now with this first campaign, we're going to target people who have never seen our brand before. And in marketing, this is called cold traffic which is why we're going to name this campaign cold and then add the campaign objective, which is conversions. Then we have to decide how we want to manage our budget within our campaign. So if we turn on campaign budget optimization, also called CBO, then we can define our budget for the entire campaign and TikTok will decide for us how much money each ad group within our campaign will receive based on what TikTok things will get us the most sales. Now, if we turn CBO off, then we're going to set the budget at the ad group level, which is called ABO. And this means it's up to us to read the data and then manually increase or decrease the budget for each ad group. For testing, I recommend to leave CBO turned off because this is going to enable us to have more control over where we spend our money. Then let's click on continue. And now we're going to create our first ad group within our new campaign. We're going to name our ad groups based on the audience that we're targeting. So if we are targeting people who are interested in travel, then we would simply name this ad group travel. But for this ad group, I want to test a broad audience without adding any interests. This currently works quite well on TikTok. So because I'm not adding any interests in this ad group, I'm going to name it broad. Then here we're going to select our pixel. This is really important because that's how TikTok receives data from our Shopify store. For the optimization event, we're going to choose complete payment. Then on replacements, we're going to click on select placement and then make sure that only TikTok is selected. If we don't do this, then our ads might also show up on other apps, which at this stage we don't want. Now let's click on advanced settings and then turn off the video download feature so it's not as easy for people to just steal our ads. Then we have the automated creative optimization feature, which if we turn this on, it will basically split test different parts of our ad and then optimize based on what's working best. However, at this stage, I'm going to leave this turned off because I want to test everything manually myself so I can actively learn what works best for my product. So let's move on to the targeting. Here we can basically set filters for who we want to show our ads to. We're going to leave the targeting mode at custom targeting. And then for demographics, we're going to put in the countries we want to sell to. So let's say we want to target the United States and Canada. We can then just select those here. 
For language, I'm gonna select English, and then for gender, this really depends on your product. So for example, if you're selling something that is clearly a product for women, then it definitely makes sense to just select female here. For some products though, it might make sense testing a male audience as well, as they might buy it as a present for somebody else. I'm gonna leave this at all as my product isn't specific to gender. Then for age, I recommend to deselect the 13 to 17 age group because children in that age, they don't even have a credit card, so it doesn't make sense to show them our ads. And then let's go to interests and behaviors. Here we can really narrow down the targeting to the audience that would be most interested in buying our product. Now, like I said before, in this ad group, we're testing a broad audience, so we don't wanna narrow down our audience by targeting a specific interest. What works quite well on TikTok is to not target any interest and then just show our ads to as many people as possible. And then the TikTok algorithm is quite good at learning how the target customer actually looks like. And then it will optimize based on that information. That's the idea behind targeting a broad audience. However, later on, we're also going to create separate ad groups for testing specific interests as well. Now let's move on to the budget. As we've decided to define our budget at the ad group level, now we're gonna have to tell TikTok how much money we wanna spend on this ad group. In general, the more money we spend per day, the more people will see our ads. As a beginner, I recommend to start with the minimum, which is $20 per day. Then under day parting, we could select a specific time of day when our ads should be shown. This is something that we could set up later once we have some data and know what times people usually buy our product. But for now, I'm gonna leave this at all day. Then for bidding and optimization, we're gonna leave the optimization goal at conversion and then the bid strategy at lowest cost. And then click next. Now we're at the ad level of our campaign where we can actually create the ad. So I'm gonna name this ad, ad one, and then under identity, we're gonna add our brand name and also upload a logo of our brand. Then I'm gonna move on to the ad details. This is where we can upload the video, which will be shown as the actual ad. In advertising, this is called the creative. So how do we actually get the creative made? Well, you can either order the product and then create everything yourself, or you can simply pay an ad agency to create some ads for you. I actually prefer this option when it comes to testing new products because it does take a lot less time on my part and I have more time to spend finding new products and testing them to find a potential winner. The ad agency that I use is called Bands Off Ads and I'm gonna leave a link to them down below in the video description. So once you create your account with them, you wanna go to TikTok and then I recommend to get this package right here, the TikTok ad package, which will give you three variations of a 15 to 30 second long TikTok ad for your specific product. Now what these guys are going to do is find clips of your product online and then cut together a video ad that is optimized for TikTok. So let's go back to the TikTok ad platform where we can now upload our creative by clicking upload and then dropping our video files here. In the text field, I recommend to put in your offer. So for example, if we have a 50% discount offer, then we can simply put something like holiday sale 50% off. Then we wanna send people directly to the product page. So I'm gonna put the URL of the product page here. Then for the call to action button, we're gonna click here, then click on edit, change this to standard, and then choose shop now. This is what makes the most sense for selling a physical product. Then for tracking, we've already set up our TikTok pixel, so everything's fine here. And we can go ahead and click on submit. When that's done, our ad is going to be reviewed by TikTok, and once it's approved, it'll automatically start running. So now we are inside of the TikTok ads manager where we can manage all of our campaigns. So now under campaigns, we can see the campaign we have just set up. When we click on it, it will take us one level deeper to the ad groups. So here we can see our ad group. And then when we click on the ad group, it will take us to the ads which are inside of that ad group. Now to start out, I recommend to set up two more ads in the ad group that we've already created. If you've used bands of ads to get your creatives, you should have two more variations you can test. So to set up the other two ads, we can just go to the ad we've already set up and then just click on copy, increase the number of copies to two, and then confirm. And now all we have to do is edit each of these copies to change the name. 
and of course upload the other creatives. So now we have one campaign with one ad group targeting a broad audience and in that ad group we are testing three different creatives. If you can afford to spend more than $20 a day, you can create a few more ad groups to test different interests as well. So what we can do is just go into our campaign and then we're going to copy our ad group two times. And then for each of the copies, we're going to click on edit, then scroll down to the targeting. And here choose the interest that is closely related to what your target customers would be interested in. Once you've chosen your interest, make sure to name your ad group the same way as the interest that you're targeting. This will make it much easier to keep a good overview in your campaign. So this is our campaign structure for launching our product. We have one campaign with three ad groups, one broad and two targeting interests. And in each ad group, we have three different creatives. This is the setup that I recommend to test new products. Now, once you find a product that you're profitable with using this setup, you can slowly start scaling your campaign. Scaling simply means spending more money on the ads that actually work and give you the best results. There are two main ways on how to scale your campaign, horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. Vertical scaling simply means we're just going to increase the budget of the ad groups that give us the best results so far. So let's say this ad group is the most profitable one out of all of them. What we would simply do is increase the budget of that specific ad group. If then the ad group continues to be profitable, we're simply going to increase the budget again. Then there's horizontal scaling, where we can simply duplicate the best ad group a couple of times. So let's say this ad group performed the best. What we can do is copy it four times so that now we have four of the same ad group, each spending $20. Also, make sure to look at what creatives have performed the best out of all of them and only scale the ones that have proven to convert into sales. And to make sure this product remains profitable for you, you want to continue to test new creatives and scale the ones that work the best. So now that should give you a good idea about how to test and scale dropshipping products using TikTok ads. Now, for everyone who's on a very low budget and doesn't want to spend money on ads, there's another free method you can use to get your first sales on your Shopify store. And in the dropshipping community, this method is called TikTok Organic. This is where we create a dedicated TikTok account for our Shopify store and then start posting viral videos with our product in it, which will drive free organic traffic to our dropshipping store. This method does require you to create a lot of content, so it definitely takes more time compared to just running paid ads. But the advantage is obviously that you don't really need any money to drive traffic to your store, which also gives you a much higher profit margin. I'm planning on creating a step-by-step -step tutorial on this free method as well, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video.